How did your relationship with Blink-182 begin? How did that all start? I had just moved to LA and started working at, at West Beach Recorders. And that was the first job I had taken after coming down from Canada. So basically this opportunity came up where I could make a move, start engineering at this studio and start working with bands that were coming in there. And it was like all, all sorts of really cool bands were recording there. The Offspring had just done the demos for Smash there. No Effects was just scheduled to do Punk and Drublick there, which ended up like going gold and being a huge, huge record. And so I saw this place as a great opportunity to, to go to work. So in the, I started looking through the, the, the book and in this book, it had the upcoming bookings and there was a booking for a band called Blink, you know, a couple of weeks down the road. And so that was the first I had, I had ever heard of them or seen anything, you know, on, on paper about them. And that's how I found out about the band. It wasn't Blink-182 at the time. It was just Blink. Yeah. And, and I was like, okay, I never heard of these guys. But underneath it was written um, booking Cargo Records. And I knew Cargo Records because Cargo Records st actually started in Montreal. Oh. And a friend of mine, uh, Randy Boyd, was running that, running that distributorship. And uh, so they were distributing records to companies, but they also started signing some bands and putting out records for some bands. Part of that company, part of the, uh, one of the investors in the company moved Cargo to San Diego, set up shop there, started distributing records in uh, Southern California and in the States. And started signing bands, and one of the bands he signed was Blink. So how weird is that, right? Like yeah. that you've sort of been working with this guy on and off, producing records for their their company, their label, and their distributorship. You come to California, and all of a sudden he's got one of his bands that he's just signed in the in the studio, and they're coming in into your studio. Wow, yeah, yeah, that's that's a cool little story. Oh, it was kind of like random, but but pretty odd. So I, I sort of had a good feeling about it. So they were booked for three day sessions, three one day sessions. I'll just jump like into that because yeah, go for it, man. We're sort of we're sort of there. When I met them, was just literally when they showed up, finally showed up for the recording sessions uh, proper, and I didn't have any um, inkling of really of who they were or what or what they looked like at that time. I just knew three guys were coming from San Diego, and it was on Cargo Records, and I knew Cargo because Cargo had started in. Uh, in Montreal, you know, Cargo will be paying their bills and the band will probably be pretty good and know what they're doing. And, and so this should be a fun weekend, you know, and yeah. <laughs> that's what I sort of was thinking going into it. When the band showed up, like, wh what was that like? Like they just showed up and they just kind of rushed the gear out of their van. Like how, how was that arrival? You know, it's all, the band arrival is always a thing, right? Like yeah. if you don't know them before, um, they didn't look like they had gotten much sleep the night before. Um, you know, they definitely looked a little scruffy. And yeah. so that first impression was definitely sort of like, okay, we'll see how we ease into this and, and see how it goes, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, and, and of course, in the, in the end, all, all, all was fine. But yeah, it was, it was definitely one of those, uh, those load in moments where like, you know, a lot's going on. You're meeting new people, pressing the flesh. Nice to meet you. Uh, blah, blah, blah. You know, and I maybe only spoken with them a day or two. I think I might have spoken with Mark on the phone just to, to advance, you know, to say, oh, it's, I'm coming. This is what we're bringing. Like, I had a, a little, just a, I believe, a, a one conversation, you know. Like, they were calling to confirm the, the time was still booked or something, you know what I mean? I'd been running my own studio in a, in a loft in Montreal for a little while. So, I mean, I knew the basics of the business from booking a studio and getting people in and you know, just uh, more of the business, business aspects of the business as well, the recording business, as opposed to just hard recording, you know? Coming from where I had come, like working up in Montreal on more uh, more budgeted productions where there was time for pre-prod or there was time for research or at least you got a cassette with the songs on it beforehand so you had some idea of the arrangements. Like we didn't have any of that, you know? I just kind of recall a sort of, you know, eating on the run there, there weren't a lot of break times we were moving very fast we were we were working all the time really just working all the time um because that was the only way it was going to get done yeah i rec recall a couple of times where we might have felt like we're like oh man are we, are we going to make it or feeling a little discouraged but in in the end i think the humor of the songs and just like the the just the situation itself. I think we were able to navigate it. Easy does it, but do it sort of thing. And I, as I recall, that was sort of the attitude. You know. Were you surprised when the band became famous? Maybe a little bit. Um, not because 
I didn't think that they had talent. There was no doubt that I realized that Mark had it in spades after working five minutes with him. Like I knew he, he had it. But it was more just because the songs that we worked on were kind of so kind of locker room or jocular in a lot of ways that I thought, oh, I don't know, like, do chicks listen to this in their car, right? Apparently they do. Do guys who drive pickup trucks listen to this song? Apparently they do. You know, and you need girls to buy your record and you need guys that drive pickup trucks to, to buy your record if you want to sell millions of records. Like you literally, yeah. you have to, uh, you're, you've got to really appeal to a very broad base of, of, of listenership. And strangely, that record has worked in, in, in that respect. Um, and it continues to sell. Like, I think the last time I checked, it sold 400 or 450,000 copies now, something like that. That's awesome. So who knows? Hey, congratulations for having worked on that. That's really cool. It may, who knows? It may go gold one day. I'm sure it would. I mean, eventually. Over the uh, you know, eventually. But it was, it was a good project to be involved in. Um, it was a good experience because... It was um, an experience in adversity, you know, and trying to get something happen so quickly, right? And I'm just glad that the, the core of what we built was able to serve and the work that O was able to do later was to bring it to fruition. Like, I always like to say a good idea is a developed idea. And I think at least that we built the, the bedrock for it so that they were able to sweeten it and then go, you know what, this is going to work. Let's get it out there, you know? And it did. It totally did. So in terms of the actual studio where you guys recorded the record, West Beach Recorders, how did you end up working there? Some buddies of mine happened to be recording at West Beach and they said, oh, you need an engineer. Check out this guy. Here's his resume. He left it here the other day. So that started a phone call where... Um, I sent them a demo reel and got uh, a job offer to move down. Um, and so when I moved down, um, I uh, sort of had to take take over the business. Um, and the uh, studio owner um, basically just gave me the keys and the calendar and said, here's the here's what's going on. And so I got to leave town and uh, good luck. How old were you at this time? I was 30 at the time. Was it, that's been a bit of a whirlwind. You just show up and all of a sudden yeah, you're just dead. Was, no, it, it totally was, you know. And so I just started going through entries in the calendar, you know, week after week. And there weren't that many bookings, but there was this booking like, you know, two or three weeks down the road. And it was this band, Blink. In general with the band, because, you know, this was the first professional recording session they ever did. And it was with, with you. And there was this short period of time. Were they nervous at all or were they cool the whole time? I think a little bit of both. I think that they weren't sure how it was going to come out. So I don't doubt that they were feeling some pressure themselves. I don't recall that manifesting itself, though, in, as far as people being uptight or argumentative or, or, um, or feeling stressed. I don't recall that at all. I actually do recall this just kind of getting the work done. And like I, we were talking earlier about some of the songs, like just laughing through them as we were recording them. Yeah, yeah. You know? I don't recall them being under a lot of stress. And I mean, at that, at, and at times, I, I definitely think that they wanted to get it right, you know, as they heard it in their heads. You know, they would take time to explain, or, oh, well, this part's going to sort of work like this, or this is going to happen here, you know? Like, they would, you know, have an idea. But, as I say, I, I think just the just the raw energy of it and, and, the, and, and getting through it was was the main guide, you know? So going back to working at West Beach, you're starting out there and within just a few weeks, you're recording Blink. In that few week period leading up to the Blink session, who else did you record? I sort of look at this calendar and I'm like, okay, well, there's a band coming in next weekend, this band Guttermouth, right? And I'm like, I'm, and I sort of, I knew, I knew, I heard about Guttermouth. I knew about this band, you know, um, but I hadn't listened to anything from them. So I kind of got started the next weekend working on their uh, project. And of course it was just amazing and they were super funny like real sort of angry Samoans circle jerks kind of real send up sense of humor in their music you know so that was perfect for me I love I love it when we don't take ourselves that seriously um, and so I jumped in started working with them and then I just started going through entries in the calendar you know week after week and there weren't that many bookings but there was this booking like you know two or three weeks down the road and it was this band Blink 
Now, you mentioned that the Blink session was tight for time and that the guys may have been a bit nervous about this being their first professional recording session. But at the same time, you also mentioned that you guys tried to stay positive throughout the entire experience. So given those mixed feelings about the situation, in general, what was the atmosphere like during the sessions? I do remember there being like us being kind of jovial off the top, you know, like I always like to keep it light. It's good to project, you know, that you're easy go easy going, you know, and that you want to to be helpful, you know, get people comfortable. I think that was probably, you know, the tone for all of us because we realized we had a lot to get through. It's just like, let's, you know, let's keep it positive, guys. Let's get through this. Let's we can do this, you know. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like what you see, make sure to subscribe for more. All the videos on this channel are original. I'm the one conducting all the interviews and editing all the videos together. So if you guys like what you see and you want to support, the best way to do so is honestly just to subscribe. Lots more to come.